Welcome everyone! Today people we will be starting our brand new series called Pokemon GX. In this series we will be taking the GX characters and putting them into the Pokemon world. Now this is going to be a completely different universe from the Pokemon universe that you're familiar with. What this means is this universe will not be the same universe as Ash Ketchum or any of the video game characters. Instead this will be its own separated universe that's completely inhabited by the Yu-Gi-Oh characters only and not any of the original characters that you're familiar with. I will be giving each GS character their own special Pokemon that represent different monsters in their deck as well as their personalities or battle styles. Even though this is its own separated universe, I will be having crossover battles in the future where I'll have characters like Jaden Yugi or Yugi Moto face off against Ash Ketchum, or I will have rivals like Paul or Gary face off against characters like Zane or Chaz. So don't worry, there'll be many crossover battles in the future where you'll see these Yu-Gi-Oh characters face off against Pokemon characters that you guys already know of. Alright, so first up, we're going to start with our main boy, Jaden Yuki. He's age 16, he's from the Hoenn region, and his hometown is Petalburg City. Jaden has always been a super excited kid that was always passionate about Pokemon and battling. He always seemed to have a very close bond with all Pokemon around him, and seems to be able to understand their feelings, and in some occasions can even understand what they're saying. He loves to help anyone in danger. Growing up, Jaden would spend time with the wild Pokemon around Petalburg, and watching Pokemon battles on TV as well as watching the Pokemon battles in the Petalburg gym. Jaden likes to draw his own superheroes and whenever he would catch a new Pokemon he would nickname it after one of his created heroes. He aims to build an amazing hero team and become the champion by defeating the Hoenn region champion Jack Atlas. Alright so let's get started building Jaden's team. So first off we're going to start off with his ace monster elemental hero Neos. So for Elemental Hero Neos, it was a bit of a difficult choice. I was deciding between two different Pokemons, but ultimately I decided to go with Lucario. The reason I chose Lucario is because Elemental Hero Neos is a warrior type monster, which I translate that into being a fighting type in Pokemon. So I had to look at all the fighting types that exist. The other option I was thinking of was Gallade, but since Gallade is more of a blade Pokemon and Neos is not really typically known for being a blade Pokemon, he's more of a fighter. Yes, there is Elemental Hero Neos Knight, which is the Blade Pokemon, but that's more of an exception to the rule than anything else. But I decided to go with Lucario because I felt like he had that intimidating look in his eye just like Elemental Hero Neos, and he's a very strong fighting type. So Jaden's first Pokemon ever is a Riolu that eventually evolved into a Lucario. Alright, so next up we're going to be moving on to Neos' ability and movesets. Just a quick reminder for you guys, in my specific Pokemon universe, I decided that all Pokemon can learn up to 6 moves, but are only allowed to use 4 of their 6 moves legally in a battle. So keep that in mind when you guys see the movesets for Jaden's team and all the teams of all the characters in the future. But anyway, let's get started. Alright, so Neos' ability is going to be Inner Focus. Its first move is going to be Close Combat to represent Elemental Hero Neos' Wrath of Neos attack. Next up we have Aura Spear, you can't have a Lucario without Aura Spear. Then we have Low Sweep as kind of a weaker fighting type move that can be used smart to lower the opponent's speed which is, could come in handy. Then we have Bullet Punch for extra speed and also a, a Stab Steel type move. Then we have Bone Rush just for some diversity, some little damage, some ground type moves. Then we have Psychic for some massive power and diversity. And that's pretty much it for Neos' moveset. Now that we have his Ace Monster out of the way, let's get into his starter Pokemon. Since I'm trying to build a team based on the monsters in this deck, I decided that the hero that I'm going to pick for this next choice will be Elemental Hero Burstinatrix. So the only starter Pokemon that fits that category is Torchic. So Torchic would evolve into Combusken, then evolve into Blaziken. I feel like Blaziken is the perfect fire type slash fighting Pokemon to represent Burstinatrix. I was also considering Delphox, but Delphox is really more of a spellcaster themed Pokemon. So I felt since Burstinatrix is a warrior, Jaden has a warrior deck, I felt like I said, fighting best represents warrior in Pokemon, so I felt that Blaziken was truly the best option for it. Blaziken has a really great design that could be both male or feminine, depending how you want to look at it. It has a more neutral design, not leaning one way or the other, so I felt that Blaziken was the perfect option for Bristinatrix. Alright, so for Bristinatrix ability, we have Blaze. For its first move, we have its strongest signature attack, Flare Bliss. This is supposed to represent Bristinatrix spell card that's known as burst impact which is a orange red fire that turns into blue fire and just does massive damage on the field and i felt like flare blitz was the perfect move that represented that card because it's literally an orange red flame that turns into blue and does massive damage so it's the perfect move to represent burst impact next we have the move flame burst 
obviously her name is Burstinatrix, so that's pretty much wordplay on her name. So Flame Burst, Burstinatrix. Then we have Flame Charge for small damage, but really just to increase speed because Blazikins normally aren't very fast. So, you know, you just attack real quick into something, boost up your speed, and the next turn go in and do some intense damage. Then we got High Jump Kick to represent the fighting type. For the 5th and 6th slot, I couldn't really think of too much to add, so I kind of just looked at all the moves that Blaziken learns in the games and stuff like that. So I, I just picked Crush Claw as just like a generic other move to use. It's decently strong, it's not bad. And then for its final move, I gave it Solar Beam because I felt like that's just kind of a move that Jaden won't be using that move too often because it's a move that you need to charge for. But in case if it's actually a sunny day outside or someone already used the move sunny day or the ability drought, then it'll, it'll be kind of like a move that he has hidden away, kind of like a hidden trap card that he has set there just in case if the sun is active, then your opponent will, will be caught off guard and then bam, be hit with a solar beam. So kind of like a cool little counter that no one expects. So it's, it's a move that just won't be used unless the situations are already set up. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that's Burstinatrix move set: Flare Blitz, Flame Charge, Flame Burst, High Jump Kick, Crush Claw, and Solar Beam. All right, for Jaden's third Pokemon, I decided to try to find a Pokemon that best represents Elemental Hero Avion. That's one of his most classic Elemental Hero monsters. We already did Burstinatrix, and we did Neos. So now let's do Avion. So for me, this was particularly easy. This is actually going to be very interesting because I found the perfect Pokemon to represent Avion, arguably the most perfect Pokemon. So I decided to go for a shiny Talo that will evolve into a shiny Swellow in the future, obviously. So this pick is honestly perfect, more perfect than anything else, honestly, because I mean, just look at its colors. It's green, it's white, and it's light orange, and Avion's colors are also green, white, and red which light orange and red are close enough, so I don't know. I personally feel like Shiny Swallow is the perfect option to represent Avion. I don't even need to look at any other Pokemons. I think design-wise and obviously just the fact that there's a Shiny that matches the perfect coloring for Avion, I, I feel like, I mean, there's nothing left that needs to be said, right? <laughs> But yeah, so that's going to be uh, Jaden's third Pokemon pick. He catches a shiny Talo in the wild and evolves into a, a Swellow. So now we're going to get into Avion's moveset. So for Avion, I gave him the ability Guts. Uh, both abilities are kind of eh, okay. Maybe I could give it Scrappy, you know, to hit Ghost types and stuff too. Um, I'm still debating between the two, but for now I'm sticking with Guts. So for its moveset, I'm only going to give him five moves. Its signature boss move is going to be Brave Bird. Brave Bird is just... One of my most favorite iconic moves, just like Flare Blitz and Vault Tackle and all that stuff. I love those high damage moves. They're so cool. So for a second move, we run Aerial Ace as kind of just a, a lower leveled flying type move that doesn't miss. That's mainly why I added that over Wing Attack because it doesn't miss. So that's great. That'll come in handy for like accuracy issues and all that stuff in case of you're facing like double team or... Or, you know, stuff that lowers your accuracy. Because Aerial Ace, I'm pretty sure, never misses, even if your accuracy is lowered. So, it's fine. I chose Aerial Ace. Next up, for the third move, we have Feather Dance. Avion's Japanese name is known as Featherman, so naturally, and he has feathers, so I've picked Feather Dance. Also, this will give a speed boost to some of uh, Jaden's Pokemons in his team. So, this will be great, because it will give everyone some more speed. Even though he mostly runs a lot of speedy uh, attackers, which you, you guys will see. But this will give some of the slower Pokemon some speed as well, and as well as Burstinatrix, who, like I said, doesn't have a lot of natural speed. So if you weren't able to get off a Flame Charge or whatever, you could set up the Feather Dance and then bring out Burstinatrix and start sweeping. So that's a combo right there. Next up for its fourth move, we have U-Turn. I really like this move on Avion because I feel like just having a move, one, it's a bug type move, it glow, it'll glow green the way I picture it in my mind, it glows green. It goes in, it attacks the opponent, and then it just swaps out. And then we bring in another one of uh, another one of Jaden's heroes in the ring and whatnot. But yeah, so U-Turn, I really wanted to add that move. It's a unique move that you don't really get to see a lot in the anime or really at all. So I felt like that's a really good move for Avion. He could go in, do some quick damage, and then bounce right back out. And then summon another one of the heroes. So I think that's cool. It's kind of like a hero swap, a hero roll call or whatever. You know, you just go in, do some damage, swap out, summon another hero. So I think that's really cool. And then its final move is just going to be simple Steel Wing, you know, just for a Steel type move to counter some rocks and whatnot. Pretty basic, pretty simple. All right, so that's Avion's move set. That's Brave Bird, Aerial Ace, Feather Dance, U-Turn, and Steel Wing. Jaden has a shiny Swallow, so there you go. <laughs> 
All right. So for Jaden's fourth Pokemon, this is going to be kind of a, a unique pick. So this is not going to be a Pokemon from the Hoenn region. He did meet it in the Hoenn region, but it's not a Hoenn region Pokemon. So for this Pokemon, I decided to pick a Pokemon to represent Elemental Hero Bubble Man. So I looked through all the water types and I had to look for a specific water type Pokemon that learned a specific move. Knowing that he's Bubble Man, I had to give him a bubble type signature move. So I looked at all the water type Pokemon that existed and found all the ones that learned Bubble Beam. And I felt like Piplup was the best water type Pokemon that learns Bubble Beam that fits design wise right i mean look at bubble man he has kind of a, a lot of armor on him he looks kind of thick you know and so does empoleon you know it's part steel type it's kind of thick it's a big emperor penguin and whatnot so i feel like both the pokemon and the monster look very as close to similar as possible and like i said i was looking for the iconic bubble beam move because he's bubble man he's got to have the signature move bubble beam but yeah, so he gets a Piplup, evolves it into a Primplup, and then eventually evolves into an Empoleon, and now he has a powerful Empoleon named Bubble Man. So for Bubble Man's ability, that's going to be Torrent. Uh, for its moveset, it's going to be running Bubble Beam, obviously. So that's going to be its signature move and also its strongest water type move. I have an entire storyline with this Piplup and why it only likes to use Bubble Beam. But I'll get into that another time um, in the future if you guys want to hear more about the different personalities of each of these Pokemon. How he caught them and uh, their relationships with each other and stuff like that. I'll gladly do a video in the future. But for right now, Bubble Man is his highest attacking water type move specifically. Alright, its second moveset is going to be Aqua Jet. This is just a really cool move. It's a priority move. Bubble Man is really slow so this allows it to move really fast. Also, being that it, Empoleons don't fly because they're penguins, having Aqua Jet is good because it allows you to be able to fly in the air, do some cool tricks and fly against and fight against other flying types in the air, which I think is just really cool. So it kind of makes him a pseudo flying type in a sense, by, but it's not a flying type. But yeah, its third move is just going to be Whirlpool, just a slower move to help trap your opponents into one spot and then you just dive right in with either Aqua Jet or bubble beam or its next two moves so for its fourth move set we run ice beam ice beam is one of my favorite moves just ice in general so i will always run ice beam if there's a water type usually so ice beam is a must have on there and ice covers a lot of things dragon ground flying and grass so yeah it covers really great things it's a really great counter against other dragon types so I think it's great and then its final move is going to be flash cannon obviously because it's part steel so i gave it one steel type move flash cannon is pretty powerful and it has a secondary effect to lower special defense i think so yeah so that's bubble man's move set bubble beam aqua jet whirlpool ice beam and flash cannon all right so now we're going to hop into the fifth pokemon all right so now for the fifth pokemon i decided to find the pokemon that best represents one of his classic heroes elemental hero Sparkman. so this is another perfect example of an amazing pick that represents Sparkman. So I decided that Jaden is going to catch a wild Manetric. I feel like Manetric and Sparkman have a very close design. They share the same color scheme being blue and yellow. And on top of that, they even have kind of like a similar head shape. Like that helmet that Sparkman wears is kind of the similar shape to Manetric, at least to me. Like it looks very similar. So I feel like this is honestly the perfect pick. I think Sparkman and Avion AKA Shiny Swellow and Manetric are the perfect picks to represent Sparkman and uh, Avion. So yeah, Sparkman is going to be the pick for Jaden's fourth Pokemon. For Sparkman's ability, he's going to be running Lightning Rod, his hidden ability. For his moveset, he's only going to run four moves. Uh, that's going to be Spark, being that he's Sparkman, his signature move is called Spark Flash. Um, so I decided Spark is the perfect move for it. I decided to go more for authenticity more than power you know obviously i could give it thunderbolt or thunder itself but i decided spark just fit obviously more you know i'm trying to create i'm trying to replicate spark man's character design and even move sets into manetric as a pokemon so spark is the best option then we have wild charge it's kind of like a physical move that does uh, a decent amount of damage he's more of a special attacker but it's just for diversity's sake you know to have a, a special electric type move and then a, a physical electric type move and i like the way wild charge looks because it's similar to bolt tackle in a sense just weaker next up for his third move we have quick attack just a nice generic simple priority move you know standard move and then for the fourth move we have a very unique pick we have flamethrower so I decided to give Sparkman Flamethrower. Originally, I was going to give it Flame Burst, 
but since I gave Flame Burst to Burst Tunatrix, which makes sense, I decided just to give him Flamethrower as kind of a, a unique move that nobody expects a Spark Man to learn, which is Flamethrower. And he actually can learn that in the game, believe it or not. I think you could teach it through TM, maybe through Egg Moves, but Flamethrower is right there just in case. So if Burst Tunatrix goes out in battle, and they're trying to get rid of your fire type. Well, now you have Sparkman. He has a backup fire type move just in case. So it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. So Sparkman is very powerful because it's lightning rod ability will allow him to absorb all electric type attacks. And then he gains increased special attacks. So that spark will do a lot more damage. Spark also has the secondary effect where it also has the opportunity to paralyze the opponent's Pokemon. So that'll come in handy. 65 base power is really not that low either. So that's Sparkman's moveset. Spark, Wild Charge, Flamethrower, and Quick Attack. All right, now we finally reached the final slot in Jaden's team. So for the final slot, I decided to go for Elemental Hero Necro Shade. So I was looking through all the different dark slash ghost types that existed out there to see what fit. There's nothing that really fits the design too well. So I decided for Jaden to catch a really late game Pokemon. This is the last Pokemon he catches before he enters the Pokemon League. So the final member for Jaden will be Dusnor. Dusnor has a really sick design, he's a nice looking ghost type and I felt like out of all the different ghost types and dark types that existed out there, I felt like none of them closely represented Necroshade all that well. So I felt like Dusnor was the best possible option. Also some of the moves in Dusnor's moveset match very well with Necroshade's signature attack and uh, effect and stuff like that which I'll get into next. Alright so now that we picked Dusnor, his ability is going to be Pressure. He didn't really have too many good abilities to choose from. He only had two. Picking an ability was kind of difficult because both of them weren't very good. Frisk is obviously good competitively in the game, but considering that in the anime, Pokemon don't really hold items on them usually, that ability won't really come in handy and pressure won't really come that much in handy either. So it's kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really matter which ability I choose for Dust Noir. But anyway, let's get into its moveset. Its first move is going to be Shadow Sneak. Necro Shade in the anime has a move called Dark Scratch. And I believe that's a move where he goes underground as a shadow and comes up behind you or in front of you and scratches you. So Shadow Sneak is the perfect representation for a move like that. Next up we have Shadow Punch is just another ghost type move to have. This Necro Shade won't really have a lot of diversity in terms of moves that he copped his Dust Nor really late. So he hasn't really had too much time to train with it and learn new moves. So it is what it is. Also it's just, it's just for diversity. He has a ghost type on the team and that's pretty much it. So for its third move, we have Destiny Bond. So I added Destiny Bond here because since Necro Shade has an effect that activates in the graveyard, I figured to give it Destiny Bond because obviously when Dustnor would be killed, he would take that Pokemon with him. Also, some of Necro Shade's fusions have abilities that take a Pokemon with them. For example, Elemental Hero Necro Shaman has an effect that when it's summoned, you get to destroy a monster your opponent controls. And then also, Elemental Hero Necro Darkman or Dark Bright as you guys know him, has an ability that when he's destroyed he takes a monster with him. So once again Destiny Bond is the perfect representation of a monster that activates in the graveyard and also takes a Pokemon with it. So it's literally the perfect move for him. Then we have Dark Pulse. I know Dustnor is not a special attacker but once again in the anime things work kind of differently so I kind of see him using a Dark Pulse move. It's just kind of a long range attack to use pretty much. It's, it's just there to be there. Uh, it's last move is going to be Confuse Ray just to do some tricks and shenanigans. But yeah, it's a pure ghost type. It has only ghost type moves. It doesn't have other stuff. I considered other moves and stuff, but uh, for the sake of my story and some of the battles that I have envisioned in the future, I decided not to give him a more diverse moveset because I know he can learn Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and all this other stuff, but I already have Fire on the team with Burstinatrix and Sparkman. I also have Electric type moves because of Sparkman. Eventually, I am planning on giving one of these Pokemons Ice Punch, but none of his Pokemons learn Ice Punch until after Jaden competes in the Pokemon League. So everything you guys see here, all the movesets for all of his Pokemon are his movesets that he had by the time he got up to the Pokemon League. All right, guys, now for a hero roll call. We have Lucario as Elemental Hero Neos. We have Blaziken as Burstinatrix. Then we have a Shiny Swellow as Avion. Next up, we have Empoleon as Bubble Man. The Pokemon to represent Sparkman is going to be Magnetric. And then the Pokemon to represent Necroshade is going to be Dusnoir. So that is Jaden's team. Also keep in mind that there are other Pokemon that Jaden has caught after the Pokemon League. So there are other Pokemons that he catches later on in his journey. 
I have other Pokemons that I picked out for him that represent other monsters in his deck. Monsters like Wildheart, Dandelion, and Neospatian Grandmo. And I think you guys know which Pokemon that's going to be. But yeah, so much more to look forward to in the future. If you guys want another video where I discuss more about Jaden's journey, like I said, and other Pokemons that he caught after he joined the Pokemon League, whether he win, won or lost that Pokemon League in the Hoenn League, and uh, just what happened with Jaden in general. How was his journey? But yeah, if you guys want to see more, let me know. But for now, guys, that's pretty much it. That's Jaden Yugi's team. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're going to be doing Chaz Princeton. And then after we do Chaz Princeton's team, I will do a poll talking about other Yu-Gi-Oh characters that I'm going to give teams to. And I'm going to let you guys decide. And whichever character gets the most votes, that's the next character that I will build a team for on this channel. But we're going to do Chaz next because that's Jaden's rival. So there's just a lot to look forward to in the future. So if you guys want to see more, write in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys thought of this team. Do you guys like it? Do you guys agree with my picks? Do you think I could have done better? What Pokemons do you think would have been better for Jaden's team? Which heroes or monsters in his deck would have you picked to be on his team? Keep in mind, there's still some you guys haven't seen yet. But it doesn't matter. Show me what you guys would have come up with. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Love you guys. Thank you guys for everything. See you guys in the next video.